What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. So if I was to say to you, fuck it, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Why do I keep looking down the road? I don't know. What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we've got something just a little bit different for you guys. So if I was to say to you Toyota, GT4, 3S GTE, what's the first car that comes to mind? Probably this one or even this one. Bless you. Fuck you now. Okay then guys, so this is it. We have the Toyota GT4N Caldina. Uh, now this is the end model, and the end model was a special edition of the uh, the Caldina, and it was a tribute to Hiromi Narasu, I probably said that wrong, who was the um, creator of the first uh, GT4. So this is the end edition. Um, it does have a few more optional extras than the normal edition. Um, it's got ABS. Uh, it's also got improved shocks and uh, an advanced spring rate. We have a front upper strut bar, um, a torsion rear LSD, and of course it has the Recaro seats uh, and the Recaro trim as well. So, I think looks are going to be subject to personal taste on this one, guys. Um, the side view, personally, I'm not 100% keen on, but I do love this front view. It does look really kind of tasty, don't you think? Yeah, no? Okay. <laughs> this is the third generation of the Caldina. They run from 1992 to 2007. We have got three different engine variants. There's a 1.8, there's a naturally aspirated 2 litre, and of course this one is the big boy. It's got the 2 litre 3 SGTE, uh, same engine as what runs in the 205 GT4. Uh, we're pushing out 256 horsepower. So inside, as you can see, we've got the Recaro trim. Unfortunately, the third generation only comes in a four-speed automatic Tiptronic box. Well, we'll see what that's like on the road when we actually go out for a drive. Now, they actually stopped producing this car in 2007, and it was replaced by... Um, the Toyota Avensis estate car, which is a very popular car here in the UK. We don't see many of the Caldinas. To be honest with you, this is the actual the third Caldina I've seen on the road. Um, so that tells you how much of a rare car this one is here in the UK. I know it's very popular in Australia, South America, Malaysia, Russia, those kind of areas. So although this runs a 3S GTE engine, um, it doesn't have the twin scroll turbo that the original GT4 has. It has a CT15B turbo on this one. And as I said, we're still running 256 horsepower. I'm not 100% sure on the torque figures, but it's enough to pull it through. We do have the permanent four-wheel drive system on this car. Um, there is... It's not exactly the same as the one that runs on the Celica ST205, but it's very similar. And to be honest with you guys, I couldn't tell you what the difference is. <laughs> they did do a facelift of the third generation, which started in 2005, but the changes were very subtle. Um, it didn't have, like this one has got the HID lights at the front. Uh, the facelift one didn't have it. The rear lights are also different on the, um, uh, on the facelift, and it also didn't come with the... Recaro interior. So that is about it, guys. Wraps it up for a little walk and talk around the car. Let's take this bad boy for a spin. Right 
then guys, so as the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you will have noticed, I've probably got a little bit more beard growth. Uh, I've got a different hat on and a different top on because we didn't get to finish off shooting the Caldina on day one. So we're now here on day two and we're going to go out for a drive. You lot obviously got to come with me. But just bear in mind, guys, this is not about fast and furious and all that, the things that we usually do on the channel. Um, we've got this car on the channel today because it's very rare, as I did say before. So also, although this does carry the 3S GTE engine, um, which was obviously was in the Celicas, the rally cars, I think that's where the 3S GTE kind of first came to life. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm sure your purists will correct me on that. But this is actually the fifth generation of the 3S GTE engine. And I believe it's actually the last, the last one that they ever made, engine wise for the 3S GTE, if you get what I'm saying. So it's the fifth generation. Um, in the, Salikas, the ST205, it was actually the third generation of the engine that was in there. So you would have thought that this engine has advanced a little bit more. Still carries the same Yamaha head as what the previous incarnations did. So we do have the fundamentals there. Um, as far as tuning wise goes, I'm not 100% sure on what the tuning capabilities are on the Caldina. I know with the Toyota, with the 3S GT engine, I had one personally, a GT4, the ST205. Um, had to have piggyback ECU, um, uh, Apex E, FC Commander, and all that kind of stuff. And you could only really tune them up to about 350 sort of horsepower before you had to start thinking about forging and everything else. So I'm suspecting it's going to be a similar scenario here with the Caldinas. <laughs> and purposes guys you know if you are after something um, that's different it's got a little bit of go to it don't forget it's 256 horsepower in an estate car that's good i think that's giving out more power than what the, the subaru estates give out i think they're down in the low 220s 200s i'm not 100 sure on that but 256 horsepower um you got that toyota rally red heritage infused into the car all around it's a good package you know if you want something different and it's an estate car and you know so you've got plenty of room in the back to carry whatever you want to carry and you can still blast people off the lights if you want to as well <laughs> This is like pre DSG era, so it's not like that snappy 0.000.1 of a second sort of DSG experience. But yeah, it's pretty smooth. Definitely needs another gear though. So, guys, look, if you are looking maybe to be purchasing a Caldina. They are import only, um, and prices on like this is the third gen uh, of the Caldina, and it's the last generation. So prices on the third gen are ranging from like between three and a half grand for maybe a high mileage binger to nine grand. We have seen them. I'm the owner is here with us. We have seen them for like nine grand for like a pristine one. Um, but the average sort of price you're going to be paying is maybe around, I would say. Uh, four and a half to seven K kind of mark um, for a decent example. Now, reliability wise, uh, Lee, the owner has informed me that this has been like, 
it's, it's been good, isn't it? It's been good to you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's treated him well. Um, no issues whatsoever. Obviously, the boost hasn't been turned up. Uh, regular on the maintenance. So yeah, just as with any other car, guys, you know, just keep on top of your maintenance, your oil changes, your fluid changes and all that. And uh, yeah, they should like look after you if you look after them. That's how it goes, isn't it? All right, guys, so listen, I'm gonna wrap this one up for there. I'm gonna say big shout out to my neighbor, Lee, for bringing the car dealer to the channel. Um, guys, as I said, this one is was about everything all fast and furious, like how we usually do things, but we're a motoring channel, we do all things motoring, and this definitely deserves um, some of the film time just due to being how rare the car is. And I've said it again, I said I wouldn't say it again. So on that note, guys, you lot travel safe and uh, 